I was going to ask you where the original industrial center of Canada was, what would you guess? Montreal? Wrong! It's actually Trois Rivières. Trois, 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 Trois Rivières. Why there? Why not Montreal? And why didn't Trois Rivières end up becoming the next big thing for Canadian history? And why Montreal instead? Well, it has something to do with some stuff that we talked about during the Silo 5 videos. My favorite grind silo. So I thought I'd dig a little bit deeper into it. And that fascinating topic is the four phases of the Montreal Saint Laurent Seaway thing. Fucking dumb. So in the 1700s, the British went absolutely crazy about canals because they were a naval power. They were dominant at the sea, but not super dominant on land. Powers like France, for example, had big land armies and would usually wallop the British any time that they uh, came ashore. But the British built these canals so they were able to take their really formidable naval fleets further inland and project their power and take over these continents. When you think about the Battle of Quebec, a lot of that story is really about the British being able to land troops really effectively on a river further upstream than the French had expected and surprised them. The canals were basically the British stacking the deck in their favour. So the first stage of the St. Laurent Canal system was kind of a military canal. It was built around the War of 1812 and that kind of shapes the whole canal. It really wasn't built to allow merchants to travel up and down and the locks were minimal and what was required just to get military troops up and down the canal. And at the same time, the Rideau Canal was being built. This canal uh, was further away from the American border and was the big investment for the English at the time. They didn't really want to spend money on a canal that the Americans could just waltz across the border and invade. So at the time, Canada was split into Upper and Lower Canada. Lower Canada is the Lower St. Laurent and Upper Canada is the Upper St. Laurent. Lower Canada worked between 1821 and 1824 to build the Lachine Canal and that was about 15 kilometers long or so and it had seven locks in it at the time and it was definitely the kind of biggest system on the entire St. Laurent. The last piece to fall in place on this era of the canal was the Cornwall Canal and this was actually part of Upper Canada with financing issues and at this time um, Upper Canada was the poor part of Canada which is a little different to today. French speaking people in Lower Canada were like well we don't really want to finance your bit of the canal, it's, it's going between the Great Lakes and Montreal, like what's in it for us. I have seen it written that the Cornwall Canal was a substantial part of what bankrupted Upper Canada and caused the confederation of the two Canadas um, into the province of Canada. So this was a really uncoordinated canal. The locks were all different sizes. Some of them show that the canal was kind of ridiculous. Just a kind of little lock on the side. The boat would pull up, people would portage the equipment around the side of the canal. As soon as things settled down with the Americans, everything entered a new phase, the second canal system. So the second canal system moved from being military to being money. And this canal system was built primarily so that the two economies could wage an economic war against each other. At the same time as the St. Laurent Canal system was being developed in 1825, the Americans opened the Erie Canal, which was the snazzy, typical American, giant new competitor that Canadians at the time were very worried about losing business to. So the provinces of Upper and Lower Canada were united in 1841, and suddenly uh, Lower Canada's credit score uh, allowed Upper Canada to actually get financing on some of these public works projects. Yes. It's just like getting a mortgage, except with very, very wealthy English aristocrats. So with the two Canadas united, they had the money and they built the canal. Was it successful? No, it wasn't successful at all. Barely three years after the second canal system opened, the Commissioner of Public Works acknowledged that this commercial waterway had failed to meet expectations. Effectively what had happened is they'd finished building this canal and then found that all of a sudden the British weren't going to just buy whatever the Canadians were producing. The Americans had a good canal that took stuff all the way from inland out to New York and then finally there were other ways to get stuff out. Oh my god! Oh she's beautiful! But there's a lot more water coming through the St. Laurent Canal system uh, than there was in the other canal systems. In 1847, they built 
these hydro lots alongside the canal. And a hydro lot is basically a lot which has water coming in at a certain elevation and then leaving at a lower elevation. So you can use that water to power a pump or whatever. So did this work? Yes. Why? Because you had free electricity, free energy, free cooling. The Lachine Canal in particular had this crazy advantage compared to anywhere else in Canada. There were 46 lots uh, located uh, in Lachine alone. And these businesses were mills at first, but then became foundries, ironworking workshops. You had this network effect caused by the base businesses making the Lachine Canal the place to do business in Canada. If you were going to do anything, you were going to be there because everyone was there. It was kind of like the Silicon Valley of its time where complementary businesses built off each other and built these massive industries. You start off with a flour mill and you end up with banking. They doubled the number of locks going through the Lachine system and they deepened everything to 14 feet. By 1945, in the Lachine area alone, there were something like 600 factories and manufacturing businesses that had sprung up as a result of this potent combination of transport and also energy. So something interesting that happened during the third canal system is the removal of Jesus from the canal. You couldn't traverse the canal after dark, but you also couldn't on Sundays. Both countries kind of kept pushing Jesus out of their canaling and gradually became uh, Sunday canaling uh, heathens, which is now something that the irreligious people of Quebec have absolutely no problem doing. I was down there the other day and I saw quite a number of people on the canal um, and not at church. The Welland Canal uh, between Ontario and the US had been widened and uh, doubled in depth. Subsequently, the St. Laurent network became a bottleneck. How dare they with their deeper locks and their larger boats canal every single day of the week. The seaway was launched in 1959 and resulted in massive, massive ships that had never been seen before making their way the whole way up the canal into the Great Lakes. At the same time as the seaway was built, Quebec solidified what the canal had ended up becoming. You can actually go to a website and you can see all the boats that are currently on the seaway. So it looks like there's a boat called uh, Stellar Polaris, Stellar Polaris, um, which is a non-smoking boat uh, that's headed upriver um, now uh, towards the lakes. So I'm gonna go check it out. One hour later. All right, so I missed Stella Polaris. I actually had to run and uh, still couldn't catch it in time. So when I was researching this video, I kind of finally clicked that the reason that Upper and Lower Canada are called Upper and Lower Canada is because of the St. Laurent River. The St. Laurent River still shapes Quebec today. It was originally a way for people to transport furs and goods up and down the river, and then it became a symbol of Quebec's hydropower and industry and development over time. The river has run alongside Quebec throughout its history. So that's the St. Laurent or Lawrence Canal Network as it exists today. Go of, go of Laurent, otherwise people will think you're a dildo.